Hi, everybody. Welcome to track two. I am here with Neil Bacardit. He is the lead guillotina developer at Iskra. And he will be talking to us about guillotina add ons, uh, Elasticsearch, Stripe, and G Cloud, their integration and their use. Hi, hi all. Thank you for, for being here. And I'm Neil Bacardit, and I'm going to explain you how to integrate uh, Guillotine Elasticsearch, Stripe, and G Cloud on our Guillotine. I'm going to start by presenting my screen. So, first of all, as I said before, I work as a backend developer at Iskra, and we have some projects um, with, that works with Guillotine. Um, we like uh, to work with Guillotina because it's open source and we can use Elasticsearch uh, and GCloud and Stripe easily uh, and integrate them. So in this, in this talk, what I'm going to do is to show you, well, first of all, let's define what, what it's, um, well, this is it's not bad. This is Elasticsearch, first of all. So, you know, Elasticsearch is for searching, as they said. It's, um, it's a DB where you can integrate multiple documents and you can search them um, where it's free analytics as well. Um, different kind of objects, different kind of documents. Mm. So it's really quite, quite well used, uh, you know, for search. GCloud storage, well, GCloud storage is for companies of all sizes and it's like buckets in S3, but it's in GCloud. So, it's easy to create a bucket in GCloud storage and to save all your objects there. Um, it allows you for your systems to not uh, save your blobs in, in your system. So you know, use an, a third party storage, which we use it a lot. Um, we think that it's really useful and that GCloud. So then Stripe, Stripe, well, Stripe is a payment processing platform. Well, you can make payments over the internet. Um, and it's, it's a white, it's, it's kind of used as well uh, in all over the world. So we'll see, we'll see how to integrate them with Guillotina. Well, for those that didn't know Guillotina, it's a REST JSON API built in top of Syncio Python synchronous. So um, difference with Django and Flask, uh, Guillotina is not URL dispatch. It has kind of URL and hierarchical URL structure, it means, it means that every URL maps to a specific object and th that's different from Django, Django and Flash, right? So we like Ilotina for how to map, how the URL maps to the objects and we don't have, we have this kind of feeling that every URL is a object, right? Not the feeling, it's a, that's a fact. So well, what I'm gonna talk about, so first of all, I'm gonna talk how to integrate them um, because it's really important we think that less code is more. So you don't have to code anything um, apart from the configuration files that we have. Stripe, it's a little bit different because yes, you have to type a little bit of code, but for GCloud and Elasticsearch, it is straightforward to um, just to rewrite the configuration file and start using Elasticsearch and GCloud all but out of the box without, without having to uh, code anything. And first, of, uh, the last thing I'm gonna show you how to use them. So, because, okay, if it's easy to integrate, but you don't know how to use them, or uh, it's difficult to use these, um, these applications, then, um, you know, the user will not use them because what we need to do is like to have something easy for the user, right? Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna starting by showing the code here of a guillotina config file. As you may know, Guillotina has a config file YAML, which defines all the configurations that the Guillotina is gonna be using, right? So Guillotina can use the dummy, dummy DB uh, data storage, uh, but for this specific case, we're gonna use Postgres and Redis. So Guillotina needs Postgres and Redis in order to work, right? So that's what I'm gonna do, uh, be doing here. Uh, I'm gonna run Guillotina with just a Postgres, and we are gonna see how to create objects Right, and we will see that we're not using Elasticsearch for sure, 
and we are going to see how to integrate Elasticsearch, uh, how to build Elasticsearch based on these config files that does not include Elasticsearch, right? So, I mean, I'm in my Python virtual environment here. I have installed already Guillotina, which is already there. I'm installing it in Elasticsearch and gcloud storage. These packages, Elasticsearch and gcloud storage can be found on the internet, can be found on Google and GitHub. I'm gonna take a look just for you to know. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger because I know that my screen is 4K. So, you know, in the Elasticsearch, GitHub, you can find all the code here, right? That's the start. That's, <laughs> someone has written that for you. Uh, no worries. Jordi Masipis who is working on that. Uh, myself, Nathan wrote it uh, too. Ramon collaborated as well. There are 10 contributors here. Um, well, we are very proud of it. So this is the code. Oh, I just ins installed this, making a PyPy, all right? So if you want to install it first, just go Guillotina, Elasticsearch on PyPy, and you will see that it's here, right? So just pip install. There are some release histories. That's the last one. That will be the, the last one I'm going to be using. So that's for you to know. Pip install Guillotina el Elasticsearch. In order to install Guillotina, it's pip install as well. Pip install Guillotina. It's that easy. I have, I have uploaded all these files on my repo. So then I'm going to show it to you in case that you want to try it at home or just you want to, to play around with it. So first of all, what I'm going to do is to start the Postgres because as I said before, you need Postgres. I have a make file here with some Docker commands. Uh, I'm going to just run Postgres in background. Start Redis because you need Redis. Guillotina needs Redis and Postgres. I mean, I prefer to use them. And then I'm just going to uh, start my Guillotina instance. And I'm going to use this this config file that it totally has Postgres, right? So I have my Guillotina running, my web server API, JSON API. Then I'm going to go to JSON, to my, to my Postman here, and I'm going to start playing with Guillotina, all right? That's root root, that's defined, that's defined in the config. Every time you run Guillotina, you can define the root password here. So I'm just going to get it. And as you may see, there is a database that's called data. We call data and there is nothing else, all right? So for Guillotina, in order to create content, what you have to do is the post. And the father of everything is the container, apart from the database here. So what I'm going to be doing now, it's I'm just going to create a new container for my, my application. And I'm going to call it container. And I'm going to add title, my first container. So I've created my container. See the URL uh, scheme, uh, hierarchical structure of Guillotina. Every time you create something, it's kind of a tree, right? So if you want to search for something, if you want to get an item, you have to go over the traversal. In this case, you go to the data, that's the database, and the container. So now what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to create another folder. Just for the sake of showing you how to integrate Elasticsearch, first I need to set my context here. So I'm going to call it folder, a full folder. And I'm going to say that this is my first folder. All right. So now, again, I have my full folder here. I just, just, I just created, it has nothing inside, okay? There are no items, just an empty folder. So now what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to create an item. An item is something that lives inside of inside the folder. It's a regular object that Guillotina has by default. So I'm just gonna write that down. And then I'm gonna call it my first item. So here we go. I have created my first item and you will say, okay, now I want to search, right? I want to search. Guillotina by default has this, the endpoint called search and by default, Guillotina can't use PG, can't use Postgres in order to search. It's, it saves the objects as a JSONB in the database and you can search, but of course you're not using Elasticsearch. So if you just write search in the URL and you get it, you will see that the service isn't available because I haven't installed 
the application of PG in order to search. So now let's start by how to integrate Elasticsearch. Now that I have my guillotiner running, I have created my folder and my item. I'm going to show you how to index this folder and this item into Elasticsearch. In order to do that, the other thing that you have to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this config file on my left. That's the basic one with just the Postgres here. And I'm going to show you now this another config but it's a little bit different because now it will include Elasticsearch, right? And what's the only thing that we need in order to integrate Elasticsearch? Well, what we need is the last part here and that part here of the utility. So in that part, what we are saying, it's defining uh, where our Elasticsearch is living. In this case, it could be localhost, it will be on port 9200, and that could be the prefix of the index that it's gonna be using. The sniff, you can config with the sniff for timeout, sniff for timeout, and the sniff on start. So besides, Guillotina uh, builds up the permission, the builder query that Elasticsearch is going to be using. Um, that's, that's because Guillotina has a, a very, very, um, very tight permission system that allows you to have different permissions for different files. So, of course, Elasticsearch has to search depending on these permissions that we have. For instance, if full user does not have permission to view a file, Elasticsearch should not return this file for this user. That's what this guy is using. And you can find what this, what this model is using in GitHub, as I just showed to you. So I'm going to stop my guillotina instance here that I have running. And what I'm going to be doing now is just run guillotina with the Postgres configuration and the Elasticsearch configuration. And it's going to fail. It's gonna say something like, okay, I can't find Elasticsearch because it's not running. Just let me check that out. Yeah, it's not running. So it's gonna fail some sooner or later. Just gonna stop that, all right? Can you see that? Enable to sniff host. Okay, that's because I don't have any Elasticsearch running. So what I'm gonna be doing there, I have a make file command, which is Elastic. And the Docker command here, that what it does, just run the Elasticsearch uh, image 7.51. So now I have Elasticsearch running here. Now I run Guillotina again. All right. And I'm going to Postman. You see, now we have some objects that are created, but they are not indexed. So that happened on the fly. That happened when you create something on Guillotina and you are you are saying that you want to use Elasticsearch, it will be indexed automatically. But in this case, the contents were already created. So we have some commands here, Guillotina commands, that allow us to index the data that it's already created. One of it, it's catalog. You need to create catalog in order to restart it and just clear it all and create it. Then you can call catalog reindex here. So it's a 200, it went well. Now, how can I know that, that Elasticsearch has indexed all the files? Well, I can use I can use an extension here. I'm gonna make it bigger. Allow, just let me check. Elastic VU. So this is connected to Elasticsearch, right? The the same Docker I'm running, it's connected. So if you go to the notes, you will see my the computer here, the specifications of my computer. I mean, if you go to the indices, you will see here that now we have one index created already. And it's yellow because you need more shards because we only have one. But it has created the index here. So if you click to the index, you will see now that we have the folder and the item created. So now you, we can search using Elasticsearch. How do we use it? Well, remember that I showed you that we have this search endpoint here. So I can call it now with a get. Okay. What has returned me? Two items. Okay, two items. That should be the folder and the item. Yeah, exactly. You see, the fold, the, this is the item, and that will be the, the folder. And now we can do more things here. We can do more interesting, more interesting things. How can we use this? How can we use this endpoint here? Well, I can say something like, okay, I want to search just the items that we have here. I want to filter all the objects that his type name, its type name, its item. So if I do that, I just get one result, right? And I can do the same with the I can do the same with the folder. 
I get the, I get the folder here. We can do search by context as well. So if I go to the full folder, remember that the guillotina has this traversal where the URL marks the object. So now here I can call the endpoint as well, which is gonna be showing me only the item because I'm inside the full folder. I'm searching inside of the context of the full folder. And we can do we can do more interesting, more interesting things here. You you can you can do some different kind of filters. For instance, creation date, okay, greater than equal, and you can now introduce that. So for instance, I can grab that and put it here. And I can just do that. And it's returning the element. So as you can see now, we have filtered by the creation date greater than this date. So as you can see, uh, it's easy to integrate it with Guillotina. The only thing that we need it's these lines of here. And this is in a low code manner because we don't need to type any code. We have our Elasticsearch running, we have our Guillotina running, we have a JSON REST API that is using an Elasticsearch just out of the box. It took me two minutes to, to do that. It's really straightforward, pretty easy. We are in love with that. So that will be for Elasticsearch. And then, yeah, and you may ask maybe if we, um, what happens with the query? I mean, who, who builds up the query, right? Because we are querying the Elasticsearch at the end of the day. Uh, well, the parser is doing it for us. We can re you can rewrite this parser. So if you wanna, if you wanna have more complicated queries that this endpoint does not allow you to do, you can do that by yourself. So for instance, if we go to Guillotine Elasticsearch and we search for parser here, this is the parser that is doing the job for you. So at the end, where the main point is, where the entry point is, yeah, that's here. See, this is an adapter. All the plon companions here know what an adapter is. So I'm not gonna explain it here. So uh, this is saying that Elasticsearch provides this parser here. So what it's doing, it's building all the, all the query for you. If you want to have a different parser, to do more complicated things, uh, you can rewrite this, create your own adapter and change. And you can just name it default as well. It will work. Um, that will be for Elasticsearch. I don't know if there is any questions on this. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not taking a look on this lag. So that will be for, for, for Elasticsearch. Now, let's go to the G Cloud. I'm gonna stop my guillotina here, all right? Same as before, this is my config file from the beginning. This is what the Elasticsearch. Now I'm gonna show you another one, another config file that will include G Cloud. You know what G Cloud is. This is my personal uh, cloud storage. Uh, I have some block running I have some storage, it's called block. That's my, my personal block and it's holding some images, some posts and some statistics here. So what I want now to do is when I create a folder or item that it has a block inside, I want it to appear here. So in order to do that, in order to integrate that, as I showed you before, it's really straightforward for G Cloud as well. This is the config that we had before, just with the Elasticsearch. And this will be the config with the cloud configuration. Now, what do we need here? First of all, we need uh, this cloud storage interfaces. This is by default, that one. Just copy and paste that. And to load the utility. I haven't said before, but utilities are object instantations that run when Guillotina starts, they run asynchronously and they are useful to run long tasks, for instance, and that it's one utility. So when Guillotina starts, uh, it invokes one coroutine that what we'll do is connect to the bucket and create the, the bucket. So it create it if it does not exist, right? More things that you need to know is your JSON credentials. Here you have to create service account in your Google account, Google Cloud Console account, and just uh, create the JSON credentials here, which I've, I've saved them here. Right, that will be your own one. Now I've named here 
full guillotine a bucket. Okay, that's my project ID, which I'll show you before. And that's the bucket name format. It means that it will include the container, the name of the container on the, uh, in front of this name here. And this is just an, uh, a variable here. All right, so I'm gonna start my guillotine again, but with this new configuration that we have here. Okay, now my guillotine is running. And what I'm gonna do now, it's just gonna make sure that works, yeah. So now the objective of that is that when I upload a blob into a file, um, it will appear on Google Cloud Storage automatically without doing anything, right? So in order to do that, Guillotina allows you to upload files, but first of all, we need to include one behavior because there are some attributes of the object of fields, let's call it fields, that are files. But this object here, this item does not contain any file. So what we have to do here, if you don't know how to do that, Guillotina read the docs, it's a great place to do that. That's what I'm gonna be doing. So you go to the Guillotina read the docs, latest, you know, I forget things. I used to forget things. So when I forget things, I just go to the documentation. It's the best way to do that. So I'm just gonna go to the training and I'm gonna jump over how to use Guillotina. Next topic, using the Guillotina API. There's an example here that show you how to include a behavior, which is I attachment, right? So. You know that for a content, for a content of my API, in this case, an item, to be able to hold a blob or a file, I need to have this behavior. Or I need an object or I need the kind of object that it's not item that has this, this field. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just copy that. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna do a patch on the item that I just created before. I'm gonna pass that, paste that here. That's okay. Right? So now my full item, if I get it, it should contain the behavior we just created. And of course, yeah, it has the behavior here and it has a file. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna use the, the API in order to pull the file. Now, the way it works is that there is an input that's called upload. And it goes on, you, you can read it that way. I'm uploading in the full item. Okay, let me start again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upload uh, on the full item, on the, on the field file, a binary. So I'm going to binary, I have this happy music, mp3. And that's a post if I'm not mistaken. If not, 404, not found, so it's a patch. Okay, it says 200, if I take a look at the logs, it's 200, it all went well. And now my file should be in my storage. So if I go here and I refresh the page, you will see that now I have a new bucket, which is container, full guillotina bucket. Remember that we had this container at the beginning. So that's why the container name appears. Now I can navigate through the traversal. So it has created the folders. So it, it creates the structure of the folders for you. I don't have, I have permissions to see it as my username, but we will see. Yeah, and it's here. And you have the MP3 here. So at the end of the day, what do we need? We need this cloud storage here, Guillotina G cloud interfaces, IG cloud file field, and we need all this piece of code here. And no worries, because if you don't know how to copy paste that, you just visit GitHub. This is where the module exists that we just installed with Pete at the beginning and explained you how to do exactly what I did. So you just copy that and paste it and you see that it works out of the box. Easy, right? Low code, nothing to, to type, just automatically upload it into your bucket. 
do we have? Okay. Now we have more time. Uh, Stripe. Okay. Stripe, it's a little bit more difficult to integrate, but uh, it's kind of out of the box, but you have to define the object that you want to, to pay or subscribe. Let me show you an example. Let's go to the, let's go to guillotina, Stripe, and GitHub. I think Ramon is holding that repository. Yeah, it's here. The stripe. The pipeline is here. Now. Okay, guillotine stripe is here. Same as before. Remember that I just I installed it myself. So if I make a pip list in my environment. All the Guillotina packages are here. I have Guillotina, Guillotina Elasticsearch, Gcloud, and Stripe. So just do that if you don't have it installed. Yes, Guillotina, Stripe. I mean, it's like, like that, but once it's, in, it's installed, I'm going to show you an example of what Ramon did here on, on GitHub. In order to integrate it, we, we can go to test, OK? Test and see the init file. Yes, we can see the init file. You see that piece of code here, that piece of code can be in the config, coming config.yaml. App settings, it's just another way to use configuration, but instead of using YAMLs, you use it direct, directly the, uh, an object, a Python object. So we should just copy that and paste it into our config.yaml. In this case, it will not be right because that's Python on that YAML, but no worries. We are just gonna take a look at this example here on what it's doing. So now that we integrated, we need to, uh, first of all, copy and paste this piece of code there. Now, what happens is Stripe, you can mark the kind of object that you want to pay for or that you want to subscribe. Imagine that you have uh, a full product that's called a uh, custom product, right? And you want only this product to be marked as, as can be buy, as they can be bought, right? Now, let's go to the test because Ramon has done that on the fixtures. Fixture here in conf test. Let's take a look here. You see that? Now, what Ramon is doing here, it's saying, okay, I have this custom subscription type, this kind of object, and I want to have it's no trial and this price here. This price, it's if you go to Stripe, you can upload products and then you say, okay, this product costs 15 euros. That will be an ID of the price of the product, right? So you should copy and paste that into here. You just have to go to Stripe. signing in. I'm going to switch profile. I'm going to go to my personal account. I said that it's a little bit more difficult because it's Stripe. It's, Stripe. Uh, it's difficult to configure. It's difficult. I mean, it requires some time. Just I will say it requires some time. Uh, and that I'm going to be using. Now I have to open my authentication up. Just to show you how to upload products and which ID do you need in order to make it work. Signing in. Stripe has this sandbox where you can enable which I, I recommend for developers. So you can go to products here. So I have one book here. I just created. Can you see that the price here is an ID? 
Okay, so you, you have to copy that and to put it in the configuration file of, of Guillotina, which in this case, in this case, it's a fixture because that's test, that's an environment testing what, what's happening here. So you have to paste it here instead of that one. Sorry, that one. That, that will be a subscription and that could be a product. All right, so here we are defining what type of objects do, do we want to subscribe or to buy? In our guillotine, in our simple guillotine, we just have item and folders. We don't have anything else, but in other, in other applications where you have different kind of objects, you could add your, your one here. All right. Then you need an environment variable in order to do that as well. So I believe that's in, count, that's in the same tests. Test charge, for instance. Test as my, our magnificence, our magnificent way to learn how, how the code how the code works. I believe every module and every library has to have some, some tests that show you how to do that. So as you may see here, this is the configuration of the uh, card, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is just this is just some Stripe configuration. That's why I'm saying that it's a little bit more difficult because the Stripe, of course, it's a big API and you know, uh, it's more difficult to, to get the payload and to put it and to use it. So what should we do in order to work? First of all, we need to do a post to the add-ons, all right? So Stripe, it's an add-on. What is an add-on? An add-on is something that gets installed and uninstalled. So when you call that, what you are coding is the add-on of what it's doing. And what this code is doing, if we go here, and we take a look at the add-on, that's the utility, which is gonna be here. That's what, what's gonna happen if we call the add-on. So it will get the registry and it will register this interface here. And finally, it will register. That's all of the add-on is doing here. All right. So now we, let's go to the test again. Go down, 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 down. We will see now that what we can do is to check all the prices that we have. So with this calling this registry, this and this product prices here, that will give to the front end information about the product that that the customer is trying to is trying to buy or subscribe. In this case, it's a product. That means that it's trying to uh, to. Uh, to buy it. And in this with this patch, what it's doing, it's creating another value, another price for the same product, right? So it has two prices. I don't know. Maybe it's on sale. I maybe it's on offer. Yeah. So what is doing here the test? It's creating that should sound you familiar as I created the folder and the item. So it's creating a new type, new type of object, right? That's called product. And at the same time, that this product is created automatically, it has all the endpoints necessary for the, for the customer to buy this product. So in this case, we are seeing that we are requesting the cards that we have saved in order to buy this product. And it's zero because no one has bought this item. So what we should do is to register a card. Now, this is fake for sure. So the most important thing here is that we have defined that the product, the fixed custom product type, has its mark to have all these endpoints. So now what we can do is to register a card on this product to use for this product. So we can get the cards and we'll see that there is one now. We can get the prices of the product that we just defined and we can pay it. So this PMID here, you get it from, yeah, from here. Once you register your card, you have this PMID, which you can use in order to pay the product. So what you do, it's a post to the product and pay with the price that you want and the quantity. Now will be how to use Stripe, all right? So now the response can be succeed and or no, no, or not succeed, et cetera, et cetera. Now we have multiple, uh, subscribers then can check out if the uh, if the uh, if it has gone well or not. And there are more, more tests here 
about how to buy the product in, in the EU, for instance. Same thing, you register your card, you created the product here. Take a look at the cars, there, there are none. You register your card, you get your cars, this one, and you pay it. That's all the thing that we need in order to integrate Stripe. Define, define what we have in the fixtures, and then we can use all the endpoints. Now, that's for one specific um, product. So where you just buy the product and so on and you are home and, or, or not if you're at home already, but then you can, you can subscribe. Now, subscriptions work as, as the name says. So you get charged every, every, uh, every month, every day, every week. It depends on, on, the, on the subscription. You can define it here as well. You can create new products, which now, Someone somewhere can do it. Home. Yeah, add product here. And you can say recurring, which that will be a subscription. You just standard pricing. You define your, uh, your product. And you will say that it costs 10 euros and it's recurring and it's gonna be weekly, for instance. So, and you can just, oh, the price is required, sorry. Yeah, price. Ah, no, that's, that's to create another one. Save and add more. Okay, that's all. If you go to products, we have the glasses. I add two prices here. They are the same month and week. So this is the price for the subscription. And it's the same, exactly the same than to buy a product, but instead you buy a subscription. This is all the payload that we need to send. See, this is the subscription. This is a subscription item. You get it from Stripe, all right? And here, it's kind of the same thing. What you do is to make a post to Guillotina just creating a regular object. You make a get to the, the subscriptions to see all the subscriptions that you have. The response here is an error because there is no customer, no cards as well. You can register a card as before. We register the card, we get the PM ID. And now we can check that there is a card in the, in the endpoint cards. And then you post it. And the result is active. So that could be how to subscribe using uh, Stripe together with um, Guillotina. Just think about that. I mean, if you had to do that yourself, that would be a lot of code. You can check the utility here that it's doing all the job for us. That's, that's here. You can see all the code here. That's using the, the, the API, the Strapi. API. So this is all code already. We don't have to do anything. In, I don't know. Imagine if you're using Django or Flask, you have to do that yourself. And that will be a lot of work. That could be a lot of work. And now at the end of the day, I will say that we can have G Cloud, Elasticsearch, and Stripe integrated pretty easily and pretty fast. As you may, as you have seen, uh, Stripe can take a little bit more time, but it's all code already. We are using it and it took, it didn't took more than a couple of hours or three. I don't know, in order to test it all and to go to Stripe and to configure Stripe, to define all the products in Stripe, get all the ideas, put it in Guillotina, adding the secret of Guillotina is using as well. Uh, we can have a Stripe, uh, Elasticsearch and GCloud pretty easily and pretty fast. So if we go back here, I show you how to integrate them. So I've said how to use the configs using GCloud, Elasticsearch and Stripe. I've, I've shown you that less, is, less code is more. We, we can have a lot of functionality with Guillotina without having to type any line of code. And I'll show you how to use them using the raised uh, JSON REST API. 
Now, if you have some questions, um, now that we are missing, there are five minutes, we are missing five minutes. If you have some questions, uh, just write them on the chat. Uh, at the end, it's gonna be happy to, to report them to me. We like it because it's pretty, for us, it's pretty straightforward to use uh, guillotina in this less code uh, matter. Um, that's why that's why we like it, right? And it's, it's it's open source. Everybody likes open source. Remember that we have the GitHub here where all it's open. You can have the G Cloud storage here. You can check how it's how it is how it is done. Now I will say that there are, can be small improvements, right? Because what will happen if I delete the foo item? Remember that the foo item contains contains the, the MP3 here. Now I'm jumping to G Cloud, right? But Things to improve if 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 you want to uh, contribute to Guillotina and Guillotina G Cloud, there are more things that need to be improved as well. Okay, my Guillotina it's now. If there are any questions, just just type them. But if I run again the Guillotina, I'm gonna show you what can be improved. If one of you wants to uh, get in touch with Guillotina and, uh, and these add-ons, these utilities, just text me or send me an email or open a GitHub issue. That would be appreciated. Nope. Yeah, if you run that again with G Cloud. So if I go to the full item and I delete it, okay, that's delete. You will see here that the MP3 is still there. It's because we do not take care of what is deleted or not. I mean, we prefer it, we prefer it to do it like that, but of course. Uh, code can be um, code can be enhanced, and you can do it in your own application. Uh, you can just um, use the the G Cloud API and delete it yourself. But we th we thought that it was good that the files stay there, even if they are deleted. So if you don't have any question, um, this is the end. Um, thanks for your attention. This has been a pleasure. Um, we are happy, as I said before, if there are some contributors that want to help out build the guillotina and all the guillotina add-ons and utilities that we have. So just open an issue in GitHub and I'll be happy to give a context of new developers that want to be in touch with uh, guillotina. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Neil. That was a great talk and I, we appreciate you being able to participate in our conference and speak with us. Um, I would encourage everyone to join the face-to-face, -face, the buttons at the bottom of the screen. Um, and if you have any more questions, 